there we go. Okay, so you're all very welcome um, to this information evening for the professional doctorate in education here in Trinity College. My name is Avine Bray, and at the moment I'm the acting director for the DED. Um, you'll probably hear later from Professor Andrew Loxley, who will be the um, coordinator again uh, next year. Um, so I'm going to just take you through what the, this session is going to look like. Um, I'm going to be your MC for the evening, but in a moment, I'm going to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Noel Omarkada, who's the Director of Postgraduate Teaching and Learning. And he's going to, he's joined us to give you a welcome this evening. I'm then going to give you a brief overview of the School of Education and then focus in on the um, Doctorate in Education, which is what you're all here for. Uh, we're also very lucky to have some of our past and present students here to talk to you a little bit about their experiences. And at the end of the session, we'll have time for questions and answers. So I've said the session should run from about five to six. But of course, if it does run over, if people want to stay for a little bit longer um, to ask questions, that's fine. I am happy to stay on for another little while after six o'clock. So we shall get straight to it. And um, I'm going to welcome you all to the School of Education. As I said, I'll hand over to my colleague, Dr. Nola Murkada now in a moment. But I wanted to put up a picture of our head of school who unfortunately is unable to be here this evening, but I thought you should at least all know what she looks like. So on that, um, I'm going to uh, ask Noel if you're around, Noel. I thought, I think I saw I'm you. I'm here, I'm here, Alvin, yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to hand over to you then, and uh, there you go. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, so as Avi mentioned, my name is Nola Murakhu. I'm the Director of Postgraduate Teaching and Learning in the school. Um, it sounds very important, but really I'm only talking to you now because I'm, I'm deputising for Carmel, who couldn't be there to, to welcome you all here. So Carmel is the, the head honcho, and I'm just deputising for her. Um, I'm going to leave my camera on for now, but it was doing sort of a funky disco type thing there earlier on uh, when I came on first. So if it, if it starts doing that again, apologies, and I'll just flick it off. Um, you're all very welcome to this open evening tonight. Um, and um, it's a really exciting time, I suppose, when you're thinking of undertaking doctoral research. The DED in the national and even the international context is a really, really special program. Um, it's different to anything that you'd find anywhere else, certainly in Ireland, and there are very few uh, similar courses available at an international level. Um, the focus on practice is probably the key element that distinguishes the DED um, from the other programmes that you'd have, PhD programmes um, that you'd find in Ireland. So it gives um, the students an opportunity to really focus on an element of their practice whether it's in, um, in schools, in leadership positions, in policy positions, and to do a really in-depth investigation of that in a way that will inform their future work. So in doing that, um, you'll get these insights into the way you work and the, the way you might improve that into the future. Very often um, in the grind of the day-to-day, -day, we don't have a chance to step back and to reflect on who we are and what, what we're about in the work that we're doing. And the DED, I think, offers students a really special opportunity to do that. So I won't say much more than that. I do have to run, I mentioned to, to Aveen, but um, I welcome you all. And I hope that you'll have um, fruitful discussions here tonight, that many of you will enroll with us on the DED starting in September, at which point I'll be happy to um, speak to you again as you start off on what will hopefully be a really exciting journey for you. Thanks a million, Noel. Really appreciate that you took the time to come here tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so in addition to that, uh, we also have uh, Fiona McKibben here. Uh, Fiona, do you want to say hi as well? You're on mute. <laughs> hi. Um, just just really, really quickly, your, I, I, I I'll be the person whom you would probably have a lot of day to day contact with. So I am um, and I'm the person from PhD research who sends out all of the missives and all the chase ups for progress reports and confirmation reports and all sorts of things like that. So I provide um, uh, all the admin support to Avin and to Nola, director of postgraduate teaching and learning. And I also work as research officer um, uh, 
um, and my, our our, our uh, director of education would 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 lead on that, and that's pretty much it. I get I loved uh, we have an annual PhD research doc doc, doc uh, doctoral um, uh, uh, conference every year. I get involved in that from an admin perspective as well. Love all of that. It's um, very, very highly regarded. So I would encourage um, you to, 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 to look out for that and to get involved um, uh, further down the line. And that's pretty much it. If you've got any quirks, foibles, issues, you email me at PhD Research. And if I don't have the answer for you, I know who to get the answer from. Thanks a million, Fiona. Um, so then there's myself, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm the acting director of the Professional Doctorate in Education for this year, and I am taking the stead of Professor Andrew Loxley, who I think is also here. Andrew, do you want to say a couple of words? I will do. Hello, everybody. I will um, ask Elvis to leave the building for a moment there. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and I think for sort of Noel summed it up quite nicely about what the DEDs about. And we've been, it's now in its 18th year and I sort of, I've been looking after it for almost 17 years and having very kindly while I'm away doing other bits and pieces has stepped in and looking after the programme um, and doing a wonderful job of it as well. So, yeah, it, and as Noel said, it's about professional practice and it's a great opportunity over the years for people to, just to be really egocentric and think about what they do and their professional practice and engage in research about their practice as well. And we don't all normally get these opportunities within our careers to do this. And, and, and the DEDS a lovely kind of programme to carve out that me time to be able to, to be able to do it. And again, it's to do it in a very highly, highly supportive environment as well there. And to a certain extent, a structured environment, which I think is one of the benefits of doing the professional doctorate as opposed to you know, doing the PhD, but I won't say that too loudly. But um, I'll hang around for the questions and uh, at the end as well with Avine. So if you've got any very specific questions or non-specific questions, I'll be there to sort of help answer them as well. So thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Andrew. Um, we also have some of our DEd students and graduates, uh, Dr. Karen Bacon, Derek Marr and Sylvia Healy. Um, but I'm going to hold off on allowing you guys the floor or handing it over to you because I have a special slide already ready for you guys. So if you don't mind, we'll hold on for that. Um, and I will just move on a little bit through the evening just to tell you a little bit about our School of Education. And I, uh, I was looking at this slide and thinking, how do I <laughs> how do I actually introduce this this information? And I thought I won't. I'll just leave it there for you guys to read it because I think it, re it just highlights some of the really notable points in relation to our School of Education. So if I tried to read them out loud, we'd all be going to sleep. But if you want to just, it just shows, it's really clear from this, how, um, how our school represents a really active and vibrant corner of the university. Uh, so we have got a great support and a really good community for uh, postgraduate researchers. And I think that's really clear from the, the the achievements that are evident throughout this slide. Um, so with that, I'm going to move straight on to the, the, the mo most important part of this conversation, which is the professional doctorate in education, the DEV. And I think the next couple of slides are probably what you're all most interested in. The first here is an overview of the program. And I think the structure of the DEV is really important. And as both Andrew and Noel alluded to, it's what differentiates it from a typical PhD. So it's four years part time. And the understanding is that you would still be engaged in your, your professional activity at the same time. So it has a really firm foundation in practice as well as in research. So that's really what, as, as Andrew was mentioning, what differentiates it from a traditional PhD potentially. But it also, it's four years and part time. The qualification itself is equivalent to a PhD, it is a doctorate, it is a level 10. In terms of how the programme works, I'll give you a bit more detail in this in, a, in another couple of slides, but essentially there are five modules that you complete over the first three years of the, um, of the course. And then there is a 60 to 70 word research based thesis, which is again equivalent standard to the kind of thesis that you'd be expected to produce 
going through the traditional PhD. I think one of the other things that differentiates this from the traditional PhD is that you're actually in a cohort who go through together. So you have that sense of community of people being in the same boat and of being able to sort of contact each other and uh, talk about the problems and the, the difficulties that you're having, the issues you're experiencing, and understand that it's not unusual that you're all in the same kind of boat. Um, so really, I think the, the this structure works really well, given that it is a part time and practitioner focused uh, course. And uh, so it's, it's a, just a really lovely structure and really supportive. The School of Education then, in terms of the, the sort of visions and missions, and I am going to read these off because there's no way I'd remember these, uh, it's to enable students to question, challenge and transform personal and professional knowledge in a deep and meaningful way that has a direct impact on thought and practice. So that's the first one. To develop a strong sense of belonging to a cohort of mutually supported professional inquirers and critical thinkers that will provide a social, professional and academic bond that assists each student in their persistence. And to engage in innovative and critical and creative pedagogical practice within the programme, and in particular to explore different and imaginative ways of assessing learning and progress through the programme. And I think, again, that idea of the creative, imaginative and different ways that this course is assessed in comparison to a traditional uh, approach to purely uh, creating a dissertation is again one of the, the found foundational things that differentiates it. Um, so that's sort of giving you a bit more of the, the, the vision and mission kind of idea, the values that underpin this particular course. But then if we go to the actual structure of the DED, you can see that there are three kind of components. There are the modules themselves. These are taught modules. There's the supervision, which underpins the whole thing. And then there's your own research, which is what comes out at the end. So in terms of the supervision, I love this idea of um, a relationship based on collegiality, but that is what it is. And I think it is, so there, there's that relationship with your supervisor is really very important. Um, and you do work with your supervisor from the very beginning of the course. So it's important to, to make sure that you have a good fit, that you actually have spoken with somebody who's prepared to take you on, and they are able to then guide and support the development of your thesis. So the main focus of the supervisor is working with you on the thesis, not specifically on the modules. The modules themselves, there, there are five modules and they're over three years. And they're really, and I think this is important, they're designed to support, but to intellectually challenge the students. And really the beauty of this is the exposure to such a wide variety of approaches and methodologies and different um, ways of presenting and communicating your, your understanding and your knowledge. Um, they really are, uh, they're, they're, they are challenging, but they're challenging in a really good and creative way. And the fact that it is so supported, supportive is um, just a really nice approach to doing a doctorate. And then there's your own research, and that is what the crux of this all is. So your, your, your doctorate will be based on your own thesis. Your own piece of research is what you'll actually be um, essentially graded on. That's the bit at the end that sums it all up. Um, and this is something that you need to contribute to. It's a contribution to knowledge, but also because of the focus of the DED to professional practice. So going in a little bit more depth into the structure of the DED and looking at the, the various components over each of those four years. In, if we take the modules, first of all, um, in the first year and the second year, there are two modules, each of which will have an assignment that you'll need to produce an, an assignment for. And then in year three, there's the final um, module again, which will have an assessment uh, allocated to it. In terms of the thesis, you'll begin your work on the thesis in that first year, working with your supervisor, looking at your particular area of interest, exploring the literature, and beginning to develop your research design and research questions. In the second year, that's going to continue, um, but with a particular focus towards 
uh, thinking about the field work. So what kind of data are you going to generate or collect and so on? And in that second year, you'll then begin to put that research design into place. Third year again is finishing off the empirical work. And then in your fourth year, year you'll be supported in completing the write up of your thesis and your viva, which is that, that final um, sort of examination at the end. The milestones again are broken up according to years. So obviously in the first year, you've got those two assignments. In the second year, you also have two assignments and a confirmation meeting. And at that confirmation meeting, that's sort of a, a midway point to assess how you're getting on with somebody who is not your supervisor. So it's a really helpful um, process. Uh, I've spoken to some people who said it shouldn't be a confirmation meeting, it should be an affirmation meeting. So it's all about supporting you in your development through the process. And then at the end of year three, you have a research presentation at the end of semester two, that's just sort of sharing your research so far. In addition to those, your just some notes that you would expect to have your literature review about 50% completed and your research design 50% completed at the end of year one. Literature review 90% complete at the end of year two and your research design should be finished at that stage. They are just their guidelines sort of to give you some idea of what you should be aiming for. It's not prescriptive. Um, it's not that this is what you have to do. It's just a suggestion. Um, in year three and year four, there will be workshops on writing up your thesis and um, then also Viva workshops and so on. And that really is, that gives a broad outline of what your experience will be as you go through those four years of the um, doctorate. So I'm going to move on now to the requirements, which you pro possibly are all familiar with if you've already received any communication from Fiona or myself. Uh, one of the things that you do need is an appropriate master's level qualification or equivalent. So just notice that there is an or equivalent. So if you don't have a master's, but you have um, a higher diploma and experience, come to us anyway, and we'll see if there if that is acceptable. So it's not that you're ruled out without a master's, but uh, something that would have to be a, an equivalent level. You need to have a minimum of three years experience in an educational or related context. And then in terms of your entry process, you'll need to submit an approve, uh, 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 submit a submission, you'll need to submit a research proposal. And this doesn't have to be what you are actually going to end up doing. But what you want it to, to show is that you have the potential to work at doctorate level. So you want to have some foundation in literature and you want to have some kind of critical analysis of, of the area that you'd be considering working in. At the, after that, there'll be an interview with the course director and potentially a supervisor to discuss and evaluate the proposal. Um, and then the, all of the applications are reviewed by the uh, doctoral applications committee. So that's the sort of process and that's what you, you need to produce in order to put in an application. And then that's the process for approval of the application. And now you've heard enough from me. So I am going to hand you over to some of our students and graduates. And we're going to start by welcoming Dr. Karen Bacon, who is a lecturer in social, environmental and scientific education at the Marino Institute of Education. Karen, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks, Avine. Lovely to be here. Lovely to see you all. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think maybe the best thing is if I can tell you a little bit about my story and I suppose my journey within the DED. Um, and even feel free to stop me at any point. Um, I suppose first, I applied to the DED. Uh, a year after I had become senior lecturer in the Marino Institute of Education. So at the moment, and at that time, I was lecturing there and I felt this was something that I needed to do professionally um, to inform my practice, um, but that re research should inform my practice and that practice would inform my research. And at the time when I applied, which I think, I think it was 2006, um, I was particularly interested in looking at our undergraduates. So we work with undergraduate and postgraduate um, education students, most of whom become primary school teachers. 
And I really wanted to look at the notion of getting them to think more about inquiry with young children and inquiry based learning. And I wanted to track how their ideas would change through the degree. So that was my thinking when I applied. Um, moving on maybe a year, I was approached to set up an international baccalaureate primary school in Dublin, the only and the first international baccalaureate primary school. And I felt this was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Um, so I took up that opportunity and then started looking at how I might change my proposal or change the direction of my research. And for me, that was one of the things uh, that was great that I was able to do that. So rather than focusing on inquiry with undergraduate teachers, I focused on a community of inquiry and the community of inquiry became the International School of Dublin. So uh, my research was extended out to looking at the children's ideas and uh, inquiry, talking to the parents and just looking at how the school, a small school, operated as a community of inquiry. Um, and I also then changed. I had been looking at the work of Bacton initially, and I thought that was kind of appropriate with working with undergraduate teachers. And then I shifted to C.S. Pierce. And there you'll see the title there. Um, and it was his notion of semiotics, first of all. So how we use signs, symbols and icons to share our understanding um, and his notion. He was in my mind, he was the person who really coined the idea of a community of inquiry. Um, and the third part was his role of argumentation. Um, and I kind of did a, I suppose, a deep case study. So I was looking at kind of that thick, rich description of what it would look like in this particular context. Um, and when you got to the end of it, the end of the story, I suppose there was lots on the community of inquiry. There was lots on semiotics and probably not so much on argumentation. And that was just my observation at the end. But it was a really um, transformative journey um, and that moving forward. So after I'd finished, I then actually... Uh, went back to lecturing, in fact, back to Marino Institute of Education, um, having been uh, gone for eight years. And even going back, there were opportunities that were now available to me, uh, whether it was chairing. So I chair or, or did chair the Research and Ethics Committee in Marino um, and also was approached to do various things for the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, particularly around the area of integration, uh, curricular integration and inquiry based learning. So I think you know, you do it for yourself, first of all, but you also see that there are possibilities in terms of how it's going to inf inform your professional life. Um, and that continues, you know, 10 years later. So, yeah, it was a great journey. And uh, I would strongly encourage you all to go for it. You've no idea where it'll bring you. Thanks a million, Karen. That is uh, really, really interesting. Uh, a very interesting journey. Um, and I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to tell us all about that. Um, I'm going to hold off for questions now until I go through the, the three people who we've invited here, if that's OK. And then we'll, we'll have a, a bit of time for questions um, before moving on to the final part of the presentation. So now I'm going to ask um, my own student, Derek Marr, uh, he's Deputy Principal in Holy Family Community School in Rathcool, and his thesis is, please don't forget me, Transition Year Mathematics, The Forgotten Middle Child. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I have no idea what to say to you uh, after uh, Corrine's lovely overview of hers. I don't know what your background is, but I, my day job is uh, I'm a Deputy Principal in a large school in South County, Dublin. In addition to that, I still teach mathematics as well, hence the maths in my thesis title. Uh, me, For me, my journey was always about kind of a practical solution to a task. So TY maths is something that has driven me up the wall over the last number of years of teaching it, that it's just forgotten. And that's amongst all the reforms to project maths. Then we had the JCT maths again that came along and project maths was phased in over a large number of years. The most expensive reform in the history of the state and however, this lovely middle year for about 45 to 60,000 students was just not touched at all since 1994. So that's how I got kind of started into my thesis title. I did have a master's completed a couple of years beforehand in Trinity, 
on a different area. It was mathematically based as well, but slightly different. So I kind of progressed on from there. Now I am blessed to have Avine, and although she's going to be very, very modest, uh, I, I'm blessed to have a fantastic supervisor. Uh, I'm in a group of, I think there's about nine or 10 of us in year four at the minute. Um, we have got slightly smaller as life gets in the way because uh, it is quite a journey over uh, a number of years. But um, as I've been said at the start, that group has kept me going and I think it's kept every one of us going uh, over the last number of years. Unfortunately for us, we just started in the summer of 2019. Little did we know that COVID was going to hit a couple of months later and how our life was going to become online. So I think our group is quite special in a way that we were all kind of chucked in from being face-to-face -face lectures to everything online. Um, but thankfully that's kind of now reduced greatly. Um, apart from the, the academic side of it as well, it is fascinating to hear other people's point of views. Our group is quite diverse. We've got people who have worked in nursing, engineering, lecturing in third level, post-primary practicing teachers, school management, um, also people working at third level in different areas as well. So we are quite a diverse group of, what, of where we come from and how we got there. Uh, I loved the fact that, because I toyed with the idea, do I do the PhD route or do I go for the D ed route or you know, what would be the most suitable thing for me? Um, and I think as teachers or educators that we love that group cohesion, kind of the safety and numbers approach. Um, and as a result of that, I'm thrilled I went for the D ed and not the PhD. Um, so that's my thesis title there, as I said. So I'm looking at what it means to be mathematically prepared, essentially, and how we can utilize TY mathematics to prepare students for leaving cert and indeed for life afterwards, hopefully. Um, I'm at the stage at the minute where I'm writing up and Avin is probably sick to <laughs> her teeth of correcting multiple drafts of my work. Uh, once a maths teacher, always a maths teacher, let me tell you, English is not my forte. So if you are like me and you're more numbers and science based rather than essays and syntax, by all means, still go for it. Um, it's not a barrier to it at all. Uh, I do like the fact that it's about 60 to 70,000 words. I mean, will tell you that I'm, I like kind of talking about words and uh, she's going to kill me, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> multiply over on words. I think I'm on 25,000 words in one section of one chapter alone. So we'll have a lot of uh, abstraction and synthesis as, as I mean, likes to remind me constantly. Um, uh, the workload is manageable. Uh, I have a very busy job. I'm sure you guys do as well. Um, I still teach seven hours a week. I'm deputy principal to uh, a thousand students and 104 staff. So it is a busy thing um, every day of the week. However, what I liked about the course was it's done in stages. Buy yourself a diary, keep the diary for four years and then plan your life out. Uh, the lecturers have been fantastic. Uh, Andrew's there as well. I know he's in the background uh, being very quiet, but he's not normally as quiet, let me tell you. Uh, Andrew has done, spent numerous days, hours, weeks, months looking after us before Abby took over the reins. And Fiona is there as well, hidden in the background. She is also a superstar, let me tell you, with whatever you need, whatever you're unsure of, she's only an email away. And someone who is as efficient that you only get a response back within about an hour, which is pretty impressive in a university setting, let me tell you. Um, if you have any questions as the night progresses on, please do let me know. Um, it is possible to do it. And I think that's the big thing I needed to hear a couple of years ago um, you know life is busy we all have families and kids and care to parents and whatever else however this is a structured approach and being part of that group will pick you up when you're at your minimum and will really help you to celebrate your maximum points along the way as well so there's safety in numbers lads so don't worry too much but if you have any questions as the night progresses please do just shout them out and I'll be here for a while as well to try and answer them the best I can good That's luck to you Thanks a million, Derek. That's really great. And I think just to, to bring up one of those points where you were talking about the move to online, we have kept some element of doing the course online this year. Um, I'm not sure if that will continue. The face to face is definitely better. But from a logistical perspective, we do understand as well that it, it can be difficult for people to come up. So I don't want to say anything um, definitive about the way the program will go. It will definitely be predominantly face to face because that is important, but there there may be some um, components that will be conducted online. And on that, I'd like to invite Sylvia, who is in her second year of the DED, um, to talk to you about her experience. Hi, thanks, Avin, and hi everyone. Um, 
Yeah, my background is in science. So my research area, what I'm trying to look into is in the area of science communication, public health, um, that type of area. So I'm looking at the you, the role of informal education in um, specifically infectious disease mitigation, but I suppose the, the uh, is precise title hasn't been, uh, I haven't settled on that yet. And it's, it's changing slightly as I delve more and more into the literature and so on. Um, I, I suppose in terms of um, what I want to talk to about tonight is really at the maybe reiterate some of the things that some other people have said already so having talked about the supportive environment I definitely have to second that it has been a really really supportive environment not just from the lecturers and from the supervisors who were great but also from your classmates so there's a real sense of uh, belonging in the community there um it's also as, as part of the that that building that sense of belonging is the opportunity to join the um the postgraduate conference and, and organize that as Fiona mentioned earlier on um, and to present your work work disseminate your work if you want to do that and um, there's opportunities to join research groups um, within the school of education as well there's opportunities to uh, attend seminars and things like that as well so there is that real um student community there even though we ha all have our separate lives and our, our other jobs and our, our practices elsewhere so um and the lecturers are have been fantastic as well as derek mentioned um there's you know really really interesting lectures and there's so many different themes that are explored in the lectures um, initially sometimes maybe when you look at the the program you might think well if the lectures aren't actually part of what you're assessed on um, at the end of the day, that is just the thesis, you might kind of wonder well, why, what's the point in doing the, the lectures, but actually they're really, really informative and have really, really helped to support your learning and to, to like, in, like I said, my sign, my background is science, so I was kind of used to the whole kind of scientific methodology and so on. But when you're introduced to all these other different methodologies, it really does open your mind and uh, kind of really expand your view of things and help you look at uh, things from a different perspective and so on. The assessments, as Avin alluded to earlier on as well, are really, really original and quite different and um, really kind of give you lots of ideas for how you might um, introduce them into your own and practice as well. So, for example, one of the lecture, one of the, the modules is assessed by producing an artifact. And I thought that was really interesting. And it's quite challenging as well, actually, but it was a really, really interesting thing to have to, to have to do and really how you can work that into um, reflecting on your own practice as well. And there's a lot of that reflection built into the program as well. Um, in terms of um, uh, the, the, the student group as well, I suppose we have um, <laughs> Derek mentioned the um, the class size is quite um, intimate. It's about 10 to, to 15 people in the class. Again, there was a little bit of attrition over the two years so far, um, but I suppose that's natural. But the, uh, the we've quite a diverse range of people in the group as well. We have, um, say, primary school teachers, secondary school teachers, third level teachers, and people not who are not in teachers, but in support in supportive roles in education as well. And um, that really helps to, like, listening to each other's stories and perspectives is very, very interesting as well. Um, and that blended aspect of the lectures that having alluded to there as well is very useful so we have people who commute from different countries to, to the program um, and having that blend of online uh, lectures but also plenty of them on campus as well is great because when you're on campus you get to know the other people in your class and um, we develop that community and that that it's great to bounce ideas off each other and we have a whatsapp group that's very active especially coming up to lectures and, and deadlines and so on um but it's 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 really been a fantastic um two years so far and it's really um very challenging very um i found the workload quite intense actually but for me um you know there's lots of other things going on in my life as well which makes it a bit challenging i suppose but it's um if I had any advice to give to prospective students, it would be that if you are taking um, taking on the DED, that you make sure that you have your own space within the home to carve out an office for yourself, somewhere a bit of quiet space, or use the library in Trinity if you live nearby, um, get familiar with that. Um, make sure you carve out some time for yourself as well, um, that you kind of um, make have designated time that's yours at home and have as much support at home um, if, if that's available to as, as well to, to help you um, to get your reading done and get your, your writing done as well. But keep on top of the reading. There's, in terms of the, the lecturing, the lecture material that we're given, sometimes you're, you're given um, lots of reading to do or a bit of reading to do before each lecture. And um, some of the the reading is heavy going, but it's really, really worthwhile doing. It's really, really good, very well curated lecturing or reading list that, that has been provided to students and really informative stuff that, that we've um, been asked to read and really helps kind of 
understand your methodology and the different approaches that you could um, use for your research and, uh, and your practice as well. So I think I'll finish on that point, but it's well, well worth doing, very well worth doing. And Avin, I'm delighted to hear you say that it's, it's called an affirmation and not a confirmation, because yeah, otherwise it can be quite terrifying. Best, <laughs> I like that I affirmation. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a million, Sylvia. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's really lovely to hear that everybody is having such a, a good experience. I think what I'm going to do now, because I know some of our, our speakers here aren't going to be able to stay after six o'clock. So I think I'm going to give an opportunity before I go through the last few slides, which are just a bit more about the, the experience of, of being in Trinity and what that might look like for you. Just in case you have questions for any of our um, past or present students, um, I'd like to open the floor. And if not, I'll keep going. Guys, you must have just covered everything so comprehensively that there are no questions. <laughs> oh, no, we have a question from Jonathan. Sorry, I'll put my camera on there. Um, you mentioned about supervision and the importance of uh, getting a supervisor and a supervisor that fits. And I just wondered, um, how do you go about that and how did people go about that? Did they... Um, was this something they did after their application or was it something they did before their application went in? Um, well, I can I can just give a, a quick overview of that. Usually you would try to make contact with a supervisor beforehand in order to make sure that they had capacity to take on a student, because in order to have that good relationship and collegiality, you have to have a supervisor who is capable of giving you the time. Um, but I might ask the, uh, the the speakers there if they can give their own experiences of how they found supervisors. Yeah, I suppose I probably did it most recently. So um, what I was advised to do at the time was to go onto the Trinity website and School of Education um, section of that and to look up all the lecturers' profiles within the School of Education, see what their area of um, research is and their area of um, interest and expertise is. And literally just find one that might align with your type of area the area of your research um my particular supervisor is joseph roach who his interest lies in scientific communication so we aligned kind of um, well in that respect so i contacted him he had capacity and uh now he's my supervisor so yeah i'm blessed with mine to be honest I, i'll only say good things because i've been here but uh I <laughs> I had a different experience at the start. I actually didn't have a supervisor and I'll tell you why, because the School of Education at the time was in a kind of a, a crossroads of uh, maths education personnel. So Avon and me technically kind of started at the same time. So I was a couple of weeks later than some of the other people in my class starting. Uh, but the way it was worth it, because I got uh, an excellent uh, slash modest supervisor. Uh, to help me. <laughs> But I think it, the, from talking to my my own colleagues and my, or my own classmates, the supervisor slash, there has to be a fit and you have to be on the same wavelength as the person, especially if you're going to have umpteen conversations over the next four years of your life with this person. You want to make sure that you get on, you have similar views, similar connections, and you're also passionate about the same thing. And I think if you don't have that, I think that's a big question to kind of really determine, is it for you or is it not? And that's just my personal answer. Karen, what was your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Even I would add to that. I'm, in my case, and I, yes, an omission on my part, not to credit it, Philip Matthews, um, who was my supervisor. And, and literally, I think the day of my Viva, Philip Matthews left the building. So, so he saw me out or I saw him out. But I suppose I slightly different because I, from what you've said, I think the whole um, system has been more streamlined, which I think is very welcome. Um, when I applied in 2006, I did talk to Philip Matthews because he had supervised my master's, my MED thesis, um, which was looking at children's scientific ideas. Um, so when I then, years later, uh, started thinking about doing the DED, he was obviously going to be somebody who I went and I talked to. And while I was more now moving down an inquiry route, um, which wouldn't necessarily have been his expertise, that I think he was happy to take it on. And yeah, our relationship continued. And uh, yeah, great supervision. 
I just had to recognize that I needed to produce the work before we could sit down and talk about it. <laughs> and that was a good exercise for me. But yeah, I think an interesting, that relationship is absolutely critical. Thanks, Karen. Andrew. Yeah, I was just going to say, to, just to echo that, when we set the programme up, it seems like a long time ago now, and Karen was on our, one of our first, that whole uh, underpinning uh, philosophy that the student and the supervisor needed to be in, in a similar sort of subject space, so to speak, was absolutely incredibly important. Other programmes, and again, not disparaging other programmes, would wouldn't take that time and trouble or take that particular view and you might go and do a professional doctor and they'll just give you anyone who happens to be around but we do take an awful lot of time and trouble for this matching and again some of the issues around the reason why we don't take certain students is not because they're not uh, uh you know don't hit the criteria for, for, for entry it's because we don't have a supervisor for them their subject area might be outside of our expertise or there might not be capacity uh, to take people on as well. So hence the reason why it's, it tends to be a very small program as well there. So it also tends to be quite competitive as well in terms of, uh, but it's also that whole business of matching students to find incredibly important. And again, it, it's incredibly important in terms of successful completion as well. There we find that that relationship that's built right from the start and as Derek was saying is incredibly supportive in moving you through the program as well there and the other thing I think that Derek brought up and again having you know run the thing for such a long time is the cohortness of it it was never you know designed it was not wasn't built in to the program but there is this strong sense of community that develops within the cohorts and we you know, you know myself and Abby we don't necessarily legislate for that it tends to happen organically within within the group as well and it's wonderful to see just how supportive in all sorts of different ways our students are towards each other. I mean, they build friendships and they last for a long time as well there and again there are still people who are you know came in in 2005 they're still friends they're still connected and they still still make contact and that's a very again a very strong part of the program as well which I think we're very proud of but it's one of these things that never really get gets put into the more formal sphere so sorry back to you Abby. Oh, that's brilliant uh, thanks Andrew I think that really that was an excellent question and I hope it's been very well answered at this stage does anybody have another question for any of our speakers? I mean, I forgot to mention as well about funding, because I think that can put off a lot of people and people don't like to talk about money because we're Irish. Um, however, there is lots of funding opportunities available. And it's something that I didn't realise at the start, but as time went on, I really did. So, for example, the INTO if you're primary, the ASTI slash CY if you're post-primary, the Merino refund of fees scheme, your tax back on top of that, the teaching council bursaries, uh, the John Hulhan, um, the own trustees of every school in Ireland normally has a bursary as well. So just be mindful of that, um, because it's something I would have loved to know before paying a lot of money over the last number of years. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different places available. We might, Derek, ask you to to put some of those up on our website, or at least to to put put them in an email to me anyway, so that we can make people aware. Because I'm not aware of most of those. I will. Carol, um, I see your hand up there. Sorry, yeah, thanks. I just popped my uh, question into the chat. Um, I'm just going to stick to the, the second one first, which is about the tax relief. In, in the revenues list um, of courses that they will give you tax relief for, DED is not actually mentioned. And I just wonder, is that an oversight um, uh, or whether that could be rectified? Because PhDs and MSCs, but the DED is not there um, in this year's list. Um, so that's just something to, to, to maybe raise. And uh, the other question was about how the core modules are assessed. Um, well, I think that's uh, one of the things that was alluded to by by Sylvia earlier is that they're assessed in a variety of different ways. So um, one of them is assessed by the creation of an artifact, for example, and there is another um, a, a set of lectures that I'm giving at the moment. And the assessment for that will be by presentation and only a very small written piece. Uh, so there, the focus is on really diversifying the type of assessment to to generate more innovative um, thinking as well around the topics. So it's not always essay based, no. Thanks. Okay, uh, John? John Kenny, I think you have a hand up.
Okay, um, John, I don't think you're on mute, but for some reason I can't hear you if you're if you are asking a question. Uh, what I might do if there aren't any other questions is I will move on and uh, we will, of course, have time for questions at the end as well. Uh, but I'd like to say thank you again to our speakers. Um, I think it's it's really important to have the voices of the people who are actually going through the programme um, to, to give depth to what I'm saying. Um, so the next thing is working with your supervisor. And I think we've actually really covered a lot of this already. Um, one of the things is to uh, contact us before you begin your application process in order to make contact with a supervisor. Um, you're welcome to contact myself or um, Fiona. Um, I'll give you those details later on. Or as is advised, as was advised earlier, go to the um, website and look at the people. I think Fiona's already put that in the chat, the link to the people page um, on the School of Education website. So you get a supervisor who then supports and guides you through the process. They're generally active researchers already, and they are, as has really been identified, it is essential to have a good supervisor and a good relationship in order to get through the process. Um, generally speaking, your supervisor will have gone through, if not the DED, a PhD, mostly, um, so they know what it's like. There is an understanding there of what the process is like, and you are then expected to meet on a regular basis, and as Karen mentioned, to produce work in order to be able to have something to discuss. Um, so that's sort of the, the working with your supervisor piece. Um, and now we're going to move on to a bit more about the sort of more the communication, the, the community, the culture in the School of Education. And it really is a lovely culture. It's a very strong culture of research, but of community as well. So Although it may not be feasible for people on the d -Ed to come to the Wednesday coffee mornings, there are doctoral coffee mornings on Wednesdays, which are lovely. I think it's uh, once a month. Um, how, and there are the, there's the School of Education seminar series where different people, different researchers within the school give um, seminars uh, again on a monthly basis. The postgraduate re research conference is a really big one, and that's an annual conference. And I think both Derek and Sylvia were involved with that uh, last year quite heavily. Uh, and it's just it's a really exciting and vibrant day. Um, different people are coming in. There are people who are helping early career researchers. There are um, people on the DED themselves who are presenting and there are other uh, researchers who are presenting their own um, their own work. So it's a really, really interesting and a vibrant day. And then there are other School of Education conferences. So the school itself will host a, a variety of different conferences in different areas that uh, you could attend. But maybe more importantly, um, there is pizza and pints in the path. So uh, we really were very proud of ourselves just before this uh, started that we came up with the title for this slide because it's just so lovely, pizza and pints in the path. And it can be pints of whatever you want. Uh, we don't we don't have we don't judge. Um, but a couple of times a year, there is a social event that um, is hosted by the School of Education in the PAV, which is the you may have heard of that, even if you're you're not very familiar with um, with Trinity. But it's the, the sort of pavilion just behind the cricket pitch. And it gives you an opportunity to meet other students at different stages to talk about your research, to talk about different perspectives, exchanging information and expand that support network even beyond your immediate group. So it's a really nice experience. I've been to a couple and they're great fun. Um, the research seminar series I mentioned earlier, it's on the third Thursday of every month and uh, all of the research students are encouraged to come and contribute. And particularly, as Sylvia was mentioning, there are research groups. So you might be involved in a particular group and then you might um, be asked to present your own work there. Um, I've done a few of these myself and it's always a really lovely environment. Again, very supportive. And I wanted to say critical, but it's more critiquing. So you, you really do get some very interesting views on your work that again are pushing it forward. So it's always, it's always really supportive. Uh, the timetables are on the School of Education website, which is listed there. So again, this, these slides will be available, I think, on the website as well. Um, the, this is just a couple of pictures from uh, one of the recent postgraduate conferences. 
and it really is a fabulous opportunity. I've already spoken a bit about that, so um, I won't say too much more about that. For more information, these are my contact details, and there's the website for the, the DED. Um, this link here is, shows you where to make your formal application. And Fiona, who is the, the uh, I was going to say the guru, but she's just the fountain of knowledge, I think, is the best way to, <laughs> to, to praise Fiona. And that is how you would get in touch with her. So it's the PhD research at tcd.ie. And that brings us to our conclusion. So we're going to move on to questions and discussion. And I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I can see that there are a couple of questions in the chat or have I missed them? I think that might be actually if they're all done. So again, over to you. Um, if anybody would like to add something uh, from the team here or if anybody has any questions, um, I will open the floor. Carol. Sorry, yeah, me again. I was just wondering when you start the application process, um, I presume you can stop and start it. You don't have to log on, make yourself uh, you know, can you can you go part of the way through the process and then save it? I, I think you can. I'm yeah. fairly sure you can because I have seen um applications that are in progress, but maybe if I'm wrong, Fiona, I'm sure will jump in and correct me. But my yes. understanding is that you can, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right. You can do that. Perfect. But I was going to suggest with that, Carol, is what is do all the informal stuff first, like get someone who's potentially your potentially your supervisor there, discuss your research with them before going through that whole formal formal process uh, there. Because what what can be a bit tricky is someone will go through the formal process without contacting a supervisor. So you'll go the whole business of uploading all your documents, writing a research proposal, you know, paying you 50 quid. And then, you know, we get together and assess the application. So notice I can't do this. We don't have a supervisor for you. <laughs> when you could have avoided all of that just by sort of doing that, that informal step beforehand. And again, anyone who speaks to either myself or Avin or Fiona will, will recommend that you do that do the informal bit first. Abby? Yeah, I was just going to say, if there are any other questions, or uh, I see there's Jonathan. Jonathan, do you want to unmute there? Yeah, do me again. Um, I'm sure you may have said this, or, or maybe it's on the information there, but just um, in terms of deadlines, could you just outline the deadlines for applications and um, do we need to have that in by? That is a very good question. And actually, I'm not 100% sure I should have had that on the slide. So no, you haven't missed it. <laughs> Fiona, do you know the deadline? Yeah, really. I know last time round it was end of July. It was really up to the, yeah, uh, just to, to facilitate last minute applications, but um, end of July. So they normally push it out to, 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 uh, to around about then just to. That's to, great. Uh, really research a lot of flexibility, and so forth. Super. I feel I should have some elevator music for while I'm waiting for yeah. uh, people to ask questions. <laughs> Do we have any other questions then or shall we wrap it up? Okay, well, how about I'm going to stay here anyway, so we'll we'll bring this to a formal end. But if anybody does want to stay on and ask a question afterwards, um, I'll be here for the next few minutes. Again, uh, I'll hang there. around as well. OK, great. That's good, because you'd be better able to answer questions. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, but again, I'd like to really extend my my thanks. I'm very grateful to mm. those who have come along to, to share your own experiences with us this evening. Um, it was really lovely for me to hear them. Uh, and I'm sure it's the same from for Andrew and Fiona and to all of the rest of you for taking the time to come and uh, listen in. So thank you very much. And hopefully we will be seeing at least some of you soon. Thank you. I should stop the recording. <laughs>